In this lecture video, I'm going to show us how to impute data in SPSS. But before we proceed to impute the data in SPSS, it could be good to begin with some introductory concept, especially about the kind of variables. What type of variable do we want to impute into SPSS? That will be very important. It's good to actually understand the concept so that if you proceed to impute the data in SPSS, you will be able to present them appropriately. Of course, SPSS is a software. This is the software called SPSS. In this software, you could see there are many icons and each of the icons have drop-down menu. At the top, you have file, edit, view, data, transform, analyze, graphs, utilities, extensions, window, and help. And of course, we have two screen at the bottom, the data view screen and the variable view screen. So it is good to actually understand the type of variable that you're dealing with, and also how you could tell SPSS in a language SPSS will understand, so that in any form of analysis, you'll be able to supply the correct information to SPSS, and SPSS will process and return the right result. So this is the way it works. Tell me the right thing to do, and I will get it done and return the right result. But when you tell me the wrong thing to do, that I get confused. I may even go crazy at some point and my return a wrong output or result. So it's good to actually understand the variables you're dealing with when you are imputing data into SPSS. So that's why we'll look at this introductory aspect of it first before we could proceed to impute the data into SPSS. And we'll do it in two ways. We will import the data. If we have the data set already saved in uh, maybe Excel or any other format, and then also how we can impute the data manually. So we'll consider all of that in this video. So the first aspect is SPSS. First of all, what is the acronym for this SPSS? What does SPSS stand for? SPSS is actually an acronym for the Statistical Package for the Social Sciences. Statistical Package for the Social Sciences. And it is managed by IBM, International Business Machine. SPSS is not only meant for those in the Social Sciences, it's also meant for those in Sciences, Engineering, Physical Sciences, engineering, biological sciences, and so on. Many other disciplines also make use of SPSS when it comes to uh, data computation, data analysis. All right, imputing data in SPSS. What you should think of is, what kind of data are we dealing with? Data. The data could be qualitative, or quantitative. Now, I want to begin with the qualitative, also regarded as categorical. Now we have two forms, the nominal and also the ordinal. Now for the case of the nominal, the nominal has to do with assignment of a value to a class. In this case, there is no ranking. For nominal, variable, it does not involve ranking them in a way where one should be higher than the other. It's just a mere assignment of a value to a class or a group. That is the nominal. So if a variable is in a way where uh, we have some kind of values assigned to define a class or a group without really ranking them in an order, then it is under nominal, unlike the ordinal. For the ordinal, it involves ranking. It also has to do with assignment or allocating a value to a group, but in an increasing or decreasing order. So it could be in a ranking form. Now let's begin with the instances for the nominal. So examples of Nominal variables include gender, 
as you could see for the case of gender, what is your gender? The gender in this case, which is also known as the sex, could be male or female. So we can say one represent male, two represent female. So in this case, we can't say that males are higher than females or female higher than male, no. You merely use one to indicate that it's a male and two to indicate that it's a female. Moving on to ethnicity. We could use, for instance, one European. What is your ethnicity? If it is one, the identity one is European. Two could be Asian. Three could be African. Then four could be America or any other ethnic origin. So that's it. We are not saying that one ethnic group is higher than the other. There is no ranking. We merely allocate uh, the value or in other words, assign the value to the class. Then the next one is also eye color. Eye color is an example of qualitative data and it falls under the categorical, of course, categorical, qualitative, they are together. Then next, blood group. If you are asked what is your blood group, should we say that one blood group is higher than the other? We have four blood groups. It could be blood group A. It could be blood group B. It could be blood group AB or blood group O. Remember, there is no C. It could be A, B, A, B or O. So this is the blood group. So in this case, we might use one for blood group A, two for blood group B, then three for blood group C, and four could be blood group O. So we are done with this. Moving on to genotype and also zip code. All these are examples. In some cases, it could even take in the form of alphanumeric. That is a mixture of letters and numbers. For instance, it could. Yep, that could also fall under this category. We are not ranking. Then we'll move to the next. Remember, all these are examples of nominal variables. Then the next is the ordinal. Like we mentioned earlier, in the case of ordinal, ordinal also use, for instance, numbers to uh, assign uh, values. Uh, for instance, we use numbers one, we assign these values to one, these values to two. So we allocate it in this way in which numbers could actually represent uh, a class or group, but in such a way that there is a ranking or there is an order. For instance, socioeconomic status. So the socioeconomic status could be low, it could be medium, it could be high. In terms of satisfaction rating, not satisfied, satisfied, very satisfied. So there is ranking. You could see that very satisfied is higher than just satisfied. And of course, just satisfied is higher than not satisfied. So in terms of the uh, satisfaction level, we could have satisfied. For instance, in a case of a business, a company might want to uh, take a statistics, carry out a kind of survey, uh, design questionnaires, maybe send it by email, could be electronically, or maybe hard copy document to complete by customers. Just to investigate, to ascertain whether the customers are happy with uh, the quality of a particular product. Are they happy with the quality of the product or they are not happy? Or in terms of services, they want to also know if the customers are happy with the services. For instance, in the case of a bank, a financial institution. So your bank could decide to carry out a survey to find out, are you happy about our services? 
For instance, when you visit the bank and then you queue up, you join the queue in order to be served. You are waiting in the queue to be served by the staff. So are you happy with the services? Does it involve too much delay? Do you stay longer in the bank? Or it got you, you, you got it uh, done as fast as possible and it does not affect you in any way? Are you happy with your service or you're not happy with the service? So of course, that could also be part of the satisfaction rating where you could be not satisfied, satisfied or very satisfied. Could also say, you are well satisfied. Then you move on to the next again. Income status could also be low income. It could be high income. It could also be medium income, low income, medium income, high income. When it comes to economic uh, classification, if you want to classify them in terms of the income, the money you have, let's say in, in case of paying a tax, what is your income? Are you under the category of low income? the category of high income or the category of medium income. So that would be, uh, that would be uh, addressed appropriately. If you are to pay tax, if you're on a high income, you should pay more, depending on the country's policy. If you're on a medium income, you pay a little bit less. And if you're on a low income, you might neither pay tax, nor or you might either pay tax rather, or you pay or you do not pay tax at all. It could be that maybe you pay a little tax because you're on a low income earning status or you do not pay tax. Again, depends on the government uh, policy for that country. All right, next is education level. Education level in this case, it could be, let's say for higher education, BSc, that is first degree, will have the BSc. A, B, B, S, C. That is degree, first degree level. It could be MSc, master's degree level. And it could also be PhD, doctorate degree level. So you could see that PhD is higher than MSc. And MSc is higher than BSc. So there is ranking in this case. We might say one for BSc, two for MSc, three for PhD. We can equally use maybe PhD for seven or eight rather. Then if we say this is eight, then MSc is seven, and then BSc will be six. So we have ranked them. So you could see the ranking, six for BSc, seven for MSc, and eight for PhD, or one for BSc, two for MSc, and three for PhD. Then competition, for instance, in an athletics, where you see uh, the competitors in a race, you will have the first position, the second position, the third position. So in this case, there is ranking. The first position is higher, than the second, and the second is higher than the third. So because it involves ranking or ordering, that is why it is classified as ordinal. But where it does not involve ranking, if it only involves assigning a value or allocating a value to a group or a class without ordering, then the variable is regarded as nominal variable. Then we'll move on to the uh, type of data at my right-hand side. So at the right, we now look at quantitative. In the case of the quantitative, the quantitative data is subject to arithmetic operation. For qualitative, qualitative data, yes, there is a way to represent them. We can also perform some kind of uh, analysis. But when it comes to arithmetic operation, it's not the same as compared to that of quantitative. So the quantitative data could take the form of uh, a numeric or scale. It's in numeric form. You have a number value. It could be a decimal. It could be an integer. It could also be in the form of a fraction, or it could be a ratio 
scale. So it could be discrete or continuous. For the case of discrete, when can we say that a variable is discrete? If it can assume or takes countable number of values. For instance, the age, what is your age? Your age could be 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, 34 years, 38 years, 40, 42 years, and so on. So in that case, it's discrete. There is no decimal for your age. It's a whole number. So any number in this case that it is whole, it takes the form of an integer. There is no decimal. It's not a fraction. We regard it as discrete. So the variable that that number is assigned to is a discrete uh, variable. It is under the quantitative, but is discrete. For instance, if X represent age, and we ask that, what is your age? Your age is 30 years. And again, another person age 28 years, another person age 34 years. So by the time you put all together, they are all discrete. They are all assigned to X because X is a discrete variable representing the age in this case. So we can say that X is discrete. And then we could also move to number of customers. The number of customers in a queue maybe are waiting to be served in the bank or are waiting to be attended to in a company. Maybe uh, you visit uh, a company that uh, you have a transaction with. And by the time you visit the, co the company, you are in a queue because others arrive before you and then you are waiting to be served. So if, for instance, the manager want to know the number of uh, visitors that are available are waiting in the queue to be served, it will take a discrete form. How many customers are waiting to be served? It could be 24 customers, it could be 50 customers, it could be 100 customers, and so on. So it is discrete. In the case of a bank also, number of customers are waiting to be served in the queue. How many are they? Of course, it's discrete because it is countable. So, so long as it attains a countable number of values, then it is discrete. It takes the form of a whole number or an integer. Then the next again is number of students in a class. Maybe you attend a lecture and you're in the lectures, you're in your class receiving the lecture, and then uh, it's time to take the class register or attendance to know how many students are in the class. So in that case, the number of students who are there physically present in the class is also uh, uh, discrete because you can count them. We may have 60 students, 80 students, 120 students, and so on. So it is discrete because it is countable. And in this case, there is no decimal at all. There is no uh, a fraction. We have a whole number. Moving on to the next, which is continuous. The continuous could assume the form of an interval or a ratio scale. Example include height, pulse rate, in the case of clinical data, and then stock price. They can assume decimals in this case. What is your height? Assuming you measure your height in meters, it could be 1.7 meter, 1.7. Uh, six, four meter and so on. So because of the decimal scale in this case, it makes it continuous. So long as it assumes a decimal or ratio scale, then it's under the family of continuous variable and not discrete. For discrete, it should be countable. You could be able to assign N, for instance, maybe N equal to 20. But here now, we cannot have the particular number. The n could fall within a range. Maybe n falls between 1.60 and uh, 2.49. So you could see, in this case, we don't know 
The next value could be 1.61, it could be 1.62, it could be 1.8, 1.9, and so on. So it's not discrete. It's in the form of interval. It could also be like this, maybe 1.60, comma, and then you have 2.49. This is a closed interval, which means they are both inclusive. We could also use open interval, maybe 1.60 is less than or, or is less than n, is strictly less than n, and is strictly less than 2.49. So this is an open interval, which means that. 1.60 and 2.49 are exclusive. They are not included in this case. They are excluded. All right. So it's good to have this kind of idea so that you know exactly how you can tell SPSS to process the uh, data you supplied. If you impute data in SPSS and you impute the data wrongly, that could result to a wrong output from your analysis. In some cases, SPSS might not even proceed. And if SPSS is unable to proceed because of imputing error, then of course you need to double check your data and ensure that every error is corrected so that you proceed to perform the statistical analysis. In terms of representation, there are methods for a representation of qualitative or categorical data and also suitable method for quantitative uh, data. And of course, that also fall in another video within my YouTube channel. And of course, you could familiarize yourself with that. For instance, the bar chart, the pie chart, and frequency distribution table. They are suitable for representation of qualitative data. All right. For the quantitative also, we could use scatter plot, for instance. Scatter plot could be used for representation of quantitative data. A scatter plot. We could also proceed for further analysis like regression analysis and so on. All right, we want to now proceed to the SPSS. So this is the SPSS. Let me get this off. Move this down. So we have the SPSS. Now, in the first instance, we want to import the data already saved in a folder in my PC. So you can have the data set saved in a folder in your PC, then you can import the data. This is the first uh, part I want to show us. Then the second part will be to impute the data manually. So let's now import the data. So go to the top left, at the top left corner, you will see file, click on file. So from file, go to import data. And then how do you save the data? Is it in a form of database or is it in Excel workbook? Of course, in my own case, it's Excel workbook, XLS. Where you have it in CSV, comma delimited, then you go to CSV. If you have it in text, format, you go to text and so on. But in my own case is Excel. So I go to Excel. And then if I'm happy with this, remember, look in. So where, which folder? Is it in your document folder, download or desktop? Which of the folder in my own case is document. So I click on document. And then I save the data as data set one. So I go to this data set one. I proceed to say, okay. Open. Then you can see now, one has to be careful at this point also. Read variable names from first row of data. In this case, it's correct because we got height, gender, 
depressed, weight, blood, a pulse, that is pulse rate, blood group, anxiety, hypertensive, smoking, and so on. So the first row of the data represent the variable names. But if that is not the case, then you have to untick this box. And look at it, as I've unticked the box, SPSS now recognize them as V1, V2, that is variable one, variable two, variable three, and so on. And at this point, what do I need to do? You could see that the first row of the data set is lost. So if that happens, then of course you lose the first row of your data set. So to do it rightly, that is why SPSS gives you this preview. So that when you preview your data, the preview, you could be able to make a decision whether to proceed or whether SPSS is not giving you the right thing. Then you could tell SPSS to do the right thing. So by default, it will just proceed. So in this case, we go back and tick. And when you now tick the box, you can see that it has replaced because the information is not lost. SPSS just store it somewhere to see whether you need it or not. If you need it, back again. If you don't need it, it will go. Now that we're happy with this percentage of values that determine data type, 95%, that's fine. Ignore hidden rows and columns, that's fine. And then we'll proceed to OK. Then give a few times, that's fine. So you could see now, we have it ready with us at this point. If you look at it, in this SPSS spreadsheet, it's important to take note that the columns represent variables, while the rows represent cases. The SPSS spreadsheet is similar to Excel spreadsheet. So the rows are represented by numbers. You could see row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, row six, and so on. So these are rows. The rows represent cases, case one, case two, if I click on this, it's case one. This is case two, case three, case four. But in the case of the column, column one, which is the height, column two, gender, column three, depression, column four, weight, column five, pulse, column six, blood group, column seven, anxiety, column eight, hypertensive, column nine is smoking. So you could see we have the data set in rows and in columns. But you cannot proceed to do an analysis without double checking to see if SPSS actually impute the data correctly or not. So to do this, actually, we need to move to the next screen. Remember, we have two screens at the bottom. The bottom left, we have the data view screen and the variable view screen. So we need to click on the variable view screen. Now you could see the information will go here. These icons are still there, the file, the edit, view, data, transform, analyze, graphs, utilities, extensions, window, and help. Each of these icons have drop-down menu that could be used for different purposes. But especially when it comes to statistical analysis, they analyze, very useful. The graphs, the transform, and of course, even data. One, two, three, four, this first four. The rest of them are equally useful, like the utilities. You can check for a particular variable, could utilize it, could use for several purposes. We have lots of them here. So now you check the variable names. That's correct, height, gender, depression, weight, pulse, blood group, anxiety, hypertensive, and smoking. And in this variable name in SPSS, you don't need to give a space. In terms of character, you don't give a space at all. There should be no spacing. If you want to space it, then of course you could use hyphen to separate. If you want to separate, for instance, this blood group, you could use hyphen. But if you just separate the blood from group here in the variable name, SPSS will not process it. It will be an error. And when you do it correctly, you could proceed accordingly. Now, moving on to the type, you could see that they are all numeric. If they are not, then you click on it, you could see in, in some cases, it could be string. It could also be in the form of comma and so on. But of course, we are happy with numeric. They are all numeric. 
decimal, no decimal place. If you are happy with decimal place, you can add decimal place. For instance, two for height. Go back again and check. You could see two decimal place for the height. If you want to remove it, you go back to the variable view screen and then you reduce it to zero, which means there is no decimal. So as you go back, you could see for the height, there is no decimal. And we'll go back, we'll move from the data view screen to the variable view screen. Remember, this is the SPSS statistic data editor, which you can see. Now, the next one is the label. We could say the height measured in CMS. Then we could also have the gender. And then the next, under the label, we're trying to give the label the name that SPSS should recognize. Then the depression, we're also looking at depression. And then next is weight. The weight is measured in kilo. So we have kg. And then the pulse, pulse rate. the blood group. We have the anxiety. We have the hypertensive. And next is smoking. which is smoking habit. Now you can see what we've got. Merely looking at this, the label is sorted. We'll move on to the next, the values. For the value here, if it is quantitative variable, you don't need to do anything at all. Just leave it as it is, none. But where it is categorical or is qualitative variable, if it is qualitative or categorical, then you will need to tell SPSS what they represent, what the categories represent. Remember, categorical is under qualitative. So now you can see that gender is categorical, is qualitative. Because the gender here could take the form of male or female. If you are not sure, you can always go back. Like the gender you could see here we have one and two, one and two. We see all of them, one and two, one and two. So we take the form of one and two. So one represents male, while two represent female. So click on this, corresponding to the gender, under the, sorry, I'm clicking missing value, not the missing, is values, please. This is where I'm dealing with values. So click on this, under this value. This is the part we are dealing with, not the missing value. There is no missing value, but I'll go to that later. So the value, we have one for the value, then the label is male. So you can see that we are assigning this value to the class. One is to the class of male, two, class of female. You add it, you go to the next two for the value, and then you type in female. Thereafter, you add, and then you proceed to say OK. So SPSS now recognize this variable is categorical. Then next, or you proceed to depression. Depression is also categorical. So for depression, we have one. In the case of depression, we also have the rating. One is mild, mild depression. Then two could be moderate. And then three could be severe depression.
So we have the mild, moderate, and severe. If you are not happy with them, for instance, you, have, you want to remove a particular information, highlight it, then you will see the option to remove and it will be gone. If you want to bring it back, we'll see it again, three, severe, and then it will return again. So no information is lost. You don't need to cancel or to close your window. You just need to deal with that uh, specific case and it will be sorted. So for the depression, it's also sorted. And then next, weight. Weight is quantitative. Even if you go to the data set, you will see that weight is quantitative. So we don't need to do anything else in terms of the value. Pulse is also quantitative. So you have quantitative, it's not categorical. Only the categorical require assignment of values under the value icon. So the next will be blood group. The blood group. So for the blood group, we have one representing blood group A. We have two representing blood group B. And we have three representing blood group AB. And finally four represent blood group O. So this is sorted. We add A, B, A, B, and O. We'll move on to the next anxiety. For the anxiety also, we have one. One here is normal. We can say no or normal. Let's use normal for one in this instance. Two for mild and then three could be for severe. So you could see we are done with this. Normal, mild, severe. Then the next is hypertensive. For the hypertensive, let's look at the values of God for the hypertensive. Under hypertensive, we have one and twos, one and two. So in this case, one is no, not hypertensive. As many question was asked, are you hypertensive? Yes or no? One is no and two is yes. In terms of hypertension. Do you, are you hypertensive or you are not hypertensive? If you are hypertensive, yes. If you are not hypertensive, no. So rather than using yes or no, for instance, you are dealing with uh, a kind of research where there is where it requires ethical approval. You're dealing with human characteristics. You might decide to hide some kind of information. So using this approach could also be helpful. Rather than anyone knowing what uh, no and yes actually implies regarding the individuals, they could just see one and two, so they don't know what one and two means. But you know what one is and what two is. All right. So we go ahead, and then we have this. So one for no, two for yes. You can always view. Then the next, smoking. If you are not sure again, you could go back to the data view screen. And at the data view screen for the smoking, we have one and zeros. And in this case, from what we have, usually they are defined, then you can impute them accordingly. So zero here is no, that is non-smokers. For zero and then one is yes. Maybe a question is asked, do you smoke? Yes or no? Zero is no, you don't smoke. One is yes, you smoke. And then we are done. Moving on to the missing, there are no missing values. So you could see it, no missing value. But if there are missing values, 
there is a way to deal with the missing values in SPSS, but we haven't got any missing value at all. So we'll leave it. We'll move on to the next columns. This column, no issue, just like the width. The width is just the size. That's it. The column also, the kind of space you have there, which is major, but you don't need to do anything obviously about the columns. They align, you could align the data to the left or right. For instance here, it could also be to the center. If you say height should be at the center, now go back again and check, it's at the center. If I want to align it to the left, then go back, you will see it at the left while others are at the right. Then if you want to align it to the right, just like other variables, you will see it at the right. So you don't need to bother about that unless you really want to place it to either the left, center, or right. Then the next is the measure. This is also very important. The variable name, very important. The value, very important. And also the measure, especially the value and the measure in SPSS. Because if these two columns are not are not uh, uh, handled properly, then it could affect the entire result. So it's always advisable to double check these values and the measure, including others, but especially the values and the measure. So the measure now for height is scale, because in this case, we import data from the Excel spreadsheet or the Excel workbook to SPSS. So SPSS could be able to understand to a high extent. Now, we go to the next. Gender is nominal, so that's fine. We we'll leave it as nominal. Depression is ordinal in this case, because there's a ranking. Normal, mild depression, severe depression. So there is ranking. They are not the same in this case. There is a ranking, there is an order in the sense that one is higher than the other. Then next, weight. Weight is scale, so we'll leave it as scale. Pulse rate is also scale. In SPSS, you will see scale, nominal, ordinal are the major value, are this measure. Then next is the blood group. The blood group is nominal. We don't rank them, it could be A, B, A, B, and O. But where there is a ranking in the sense that one is higher or superior to the other, then we could, we could say that it is ordinal. But in this case, it is nominal. Anxiety. The anxiety here could be uh, normal, it could be mild, it could be severe. So there is ranking. Therefore, it is ordinal. Hypertensive, yes or no, yes or no. It could be yes, it could be no. One for yes, sorry, one for no, two for yes. So one for no, two for yes, of course, in this case is nominal. Smoking also, do you smoke, yes or no, is also nominal. So you can see then the rule is input. All these are data input. That's why SPSS is saying that they are impure. So now if you go back to data view, you will see this. And if you want to see what you've done, then just you have two options. Either you go to this view and then you click on these value labels. Alternatively, you could go to this icon beneath the help icon. So beneath the help icon, you will see this I showing one and A in red color. Click on that, and there you could see. You have the gender, male and females, the depression, moderate, mild, severe. Blood group could be A, B, A, B, O. The anxiety, you could have normal, mild, severe. Hypertensive, no, yes. Smoking could also be no, yes. So you could see. So we've done this. Now, if you click on it again, it goes back. Like I said, alternatively, you could also go to view. Then from view, 
value labels. Click on value labels and you have it. So either of these is okay. All right, so now you've seen how to enter data in SPSS. And in this case, we import the data. Now the next aspect is to enter the data manually. So now we could just go to your uh, PC. In your PC, you need to press Control N and it will bring new SPSS uh, screen. Control N. So with Control N, you could see the new screen. Then what do we need to do on this new screen? Now, you could enter the data manually one by one. You could enter them, as you could see in some other recording or other lecture video from me and other researchers, other instructors. Now, I want to copy the data because I already have it saved somewhere. So this is the data set. So I want to copy, excluding the variable names from the first to the last. So I copy this and then I proceed and paste it somewhere here. So you can see that we have all now, we copy paste. You could delete information if you want. For instance, if you want to delete this row, you highlight and delete from your device. Your PC, delete, it will go. Likewise for column, highlight it, the very column you want to delete, so once you highlight the specific column that you want to delete, and then in your PC, press delete, it will go. Just to let you know. All right, at this point, you could see that SPSS do not understand these variables. You can't ex expect SPSS to perform magic. Even though SPSS is a software, it does the job faster than human because of the presence of a wizard. But we need to also instruct SPSS. We need to direct SPSS to do the task for us. And that has to do with giving SPSS the correct information. And if you provide SPSS with the correct information, then SPSS will process the information and return the correct result. So what do you do now? You could see these are variable 0001, VRR002, VR0003 and so on. We have nine variables in this case. So to do it properly, you move to, that is at the bottom, move from the data view screen to the variable view screen. You could see all we've got. We don't even need decimals in the first place. So you could take off the decimals. Take off the decimal, even this, it should be zero. It should be zero, it should be zero. It should be zero, take off the decimal. This also will take off the decimal. We take off the decimals, take off the decimals. So when you go back, you see that no decimal anymore. Now, if you look at the measure, it's showing unknown because SPSS does not know what you are doing. The data that you brought, it's just like bringing a stranger into a house and they don't know who the stranger is. So SPSS is confused at this point. And that is why when you impute data manually into SPSS, you have lots of information to provide to SPSS. So that when you provide those information, then SPSS could be able to perform the specific task appropriately. So now this variable is height. So we need to impute height. The next variable is gender. So we enter the gender. The next variable is depression. And then we we'll move to the next. We can also check here from this file, just to be sure. The next variable again is weight, then pulse. So we go to weight. then pulse. And then we'll move to the next. Let's take them. After pulse, the next one is blood group followed by anxiety. So we got the blood group.
and then anxiety. The next is hypertensive. Followed by smoking. Again, this blood group, if you really want to separate, let me show us something now. If you try to just separate it, SPSS will return an error. Let's separate now. And then move your cursor away. Can you see now? Variable name contains an illegal character. So SPSS is very, very sensitive when it comes to character. It's character sensitive. For the case, it's not case sensitive. You could type in small case or uppercase letters. But for character, it is character sensitive, character wise. So if you do this, then SPSS will accept. So all you need to do is to use hyphen, for instance. Don't use minus, preferably use hyphen. And SPSS will understand. So no error anymore, which is fine. If you use the hyphen to separate the blood from the group, now, moving on to the type. In some cases, even the type will show string, like what we were doing before. You can see that SPSS can understand what we are doing now. So instead of showing the string that it was showing previously, it's no longer showing the string. No longer string. It's now showing numeric, which is great. So SPSS is really picking what we are doing is picking up gradually. The width, of course, this is not an issue. Like I said, decimal, in this case, decimal not applicable. But where it is applicable, no issues. You can also instruct SPSS to round numbers to a specific decimal places. Then here, the label, like we have before, height measured in CMS. Then we also have gender. We have depression. And we have weight measured in kilo, kg. And we have the pulse. We have the blood group. Anxiety. Hypertensive. And smoking. It could also be smoking habit. Then the value. We need to do this. Now, like I said earlier, if it is quantitative variable, then you don't need to do anything at all about the value, this icon value. But where it is categorical, then you need to tell SPSS what each category is actually represent. So for the height, no issues, so we leave it as it is. Then for gender, we need to do something. For the gender aspect, uh, sorry, I'm clicking wrong place, is here, values. So for gender, we we'll click on this. Then of course, one represent male. You could also use M, no issues at all. Whatever you tell SPSS to do regarding that, SPSS will do it correctly for you. Y2 represent female. And then we'll proceed at the bottom to say, okay. The next is the press. So for the depression level, we have one for mild. mild depression, which is to say it's not severe at all, just on a very low scale. Then we have two, and the two here could be moderate. So moderate depression. Then we have three, the three is severe. So it's now severe, mild, moderate, severe. Weight, we don't need to do anything about the weight measured in kilo. 
We don't need to do anything about the pulse. We could also call this pulse rate. Pulse rate. So we don't need to do anything about the pulse. Then blood group is categorical. So we need to also do the same for the blood group because it's categorical. So at the measure value, at this value here, one is blood group A, two is blood group B, three is blood group C, sorry, or C, A, B rather, A, B, and four should be blood group O. So one is blood group A, B for blood group, uh, blood group uh, that is two for blood group B, three for blood group A, B, and four for blood group O. So we have the numbers ranging from one to four are used to assign to these classes. One for those in blood group A, two for those in blood group B, three for those in blood group A, B, and four for those in blood group O in this case. And then we'll proceed to say, okay, that's sorted. This is a population of individuals. And from among this population, we have this information. And we are trying to analyze. We're using SPSS to analyze the data. So we are imputing the data set into SPSS. That is the first task before proceeding to perform other statistical analysis. So next is anxiety. For the anxiety, we have one as normal. Imputing the data manually, two for the anxiety is mild. And three is severe. Are you anxious or you are not anxious? So you look at that. So we're considering the anxiety in this case as used in clinical uh, data. Then next is hypertensive. One for no, then two for yes. Okay. Then smoking, zero for no, a person doesn't smoke. One for yes, the person smoke. So smoke or don't smoke. Zero represent non-smokers. Then one represents smokers. So that's sorted. Missing, no value is missing. So we skip this. Columns also, like we've interpreted in the uh, previous instance, you don't need to do anything about that, about a column. It's just the size, the way it's arranged, where they are placed in terms of the measure in the cells, then also the width also. So width, column, you don't need to do anything about that. Align, of course, if you really want to align it, you want your data to be at the left or right or at the center, that's fine. But other than that, there is no issue at all. Then the measure. Height is scale. So you could see that instead of unknown, it has changed from when we started imputing the variable names and other useful information. SPSS now understand what we are doing. The gender is nominal and the depression is ordinal. But of course, even if you leave it as nominal, it does not affect your analysis in this context. So long as it, it is no scale. If it is nominal and ordinal, they actually go together, except that they are not exactly the same. But in terms of the papers in SPSS, no issues. Then next, weight is scale, that's fine. Pulse is also scale. The pulse rate, because it's quantitative. Both weight, pulse, and height are quantitative. So we don't need to change it. We still have them as scale. The blood group is nominal, that's fine. Anxiety, ordinal, hypertensive nominal, smoking nominal, and then the role is input, data input. So this is how 
we do is that you go back to the day, you move from the variable view screen to the data view screen. So you could see the information we've got. If you go to this icon beneath the help icon, you will see A and one. Click on it. It will go back again. When you click on it, it will be returning back if you want these numbers that you used to assign to the uh, values or class. So you could see all of this. Alternatively, like I said earlier, you could also go to view. From view, you could click on value labels. And then you could go back again, value labels, it will take it back and so on. So you could do all of this kind of analysis in SPSS. So our aim is to impute data correctly in SPSS. That is the aim of this uh, uh, video. We've covered imputing data into SPSS from a folder where the data set is already saved. And alternatively, imputing data manually into SPSS. And like I said, you have more tasks when it involves manual imputation of data. If you are imputing the data, uh, if you are imputing the data manually, then you have more work to do than when you just import the data from a file. So uh, we will end the recording at this point. Thank you so much for watching this video. And of course, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, especially when you're happy with this lecture. You can also like if you're happy with it. You can uh, click on the like button. And of course, you can like my video. Thank you so much for your attention. And thanks for watching this video.